Rajaswar Rajan's comprehensive exploration of gender, culture, and postcolonialism is illuminated through the lens of cultural representations surrounding contentious traditions in Indian culture. These include the self-immolation of Hindu widows, sati, husband worship, bride burning, and dowry deaths. Rajan's analysis of specific texts and films is positioned within a nuanced intervention in contemporary feminist post-colonial debates on female subjectivity, the construction of tradition in minority cultures, and interpretations of resistance and agency in women's texts and broader social contexts. The study posits that post-colonial cultures share common features such as feminist negotiations with the post-colonial state, social structural inequalities, the influence of nationalism and regionalism, and the tension between tradition and modernity. Simultaneously, post-colonial identities are diverse, challenging arguments for essential indigenous identities, and the reappropriation of colonial subjects by theory. Rajan draws on selected texts and films to illustrate that representation holds its own political reality and consequences. The study contends that culture itself is both coercive and contested, and subjectivities are continually reinscribed in the cultural realm. Navigating these topics requires delicacy to avoid sensationalism and ethical imperatives. The study resists reducing women's experiences to a real pain versus discursive constructions of female subjectivity. It timely and informatively addresses social debasement, considering various religious and cultural traditions underpinning practices like sati. Sati, with its problematic attribution of motive, voluntary immolation claims, and lack of testimonies, invites debates on forms of subordination and ritual intricacies. The complexity of this topic is embedded in cultural reticence, psychological compensations, excuses, and ambiguity. Disturbingly, Despite its official abolition in 1829, there were 4,386 wife murders in 1990, indicating a tangled web of cultural pressure, ingrained practices, and self-serving male actions between these two time points. Despite Rajan's meticulous analysis of her selected texts, a deeper exploration of the material aspects of the practices would have added valuable insights. The study touches upon widows, women, husbands, and relatives, but there's a need for more exploration into circumstances leading to death by burning beyond widowhood. Questions arise about the specific rites preceding and accompanying these practices, the role of economic pressures exemplified by modern cases of daughters' suicides, due to dowry concerns and the origins of the fervor for husband worship. It's intriguing to learn that Indian women can supposedly shorten their husbands' lives simply by uttering their names, especially considering that some only speak their husbands' names at the moment of their deaths. However, the original sanctions for such extreme forms of subordination seem to require further examination. The study provides relief by acknowledging the staging of the cultural unconscious in popular films, involving elaborate acts of revenge against husbands and abuses of power. The exaggerated fantasies described align with the magnification of husbands' rights. Rajan wisely avoids emphasizing cultural differences and relativism, but rather focuses on detailed historical and textual study, highlighting the continuity with Western traditions that feminists need to underscore. 
the investigation might benefit from examining how India's integration into the global economy, Western intervention, development and aid practices, and the rural-urban divide, may have encouraged practices that replicate or imitate Sati. The study offers examples supporting this perspective. Rajan extends earlier discussions of speech and silence by introducing the concept of action, a third term with philosophical and political implications. This adds complexity to earlier feminist assumptions, challenging the notion that giving women access to public terrains and rescuing women's texts and voices from historical oblivion are the sole tasks of feminist critics. The missing term for women subjected to sati seems to be action, and the study raises important questions about measuring the subjective force of centuries of cultural practice. Sati, taken up in iconography, signifies repression, ambiguity, and cultural hybridity. It also signifies a complex relationship between pleasure and pain that warrants further questioning regarding the cultural continuation of women's ownership in Indian culture. Economic contexts don't merely replace religious motivation, they Rajan's chapter on Indira Gandhi extends the debate on the intersection of public power and private realms, challenging simplistic interpretations of women political leaders as surrogate males or symbols of motherhood. It questions gendered explanations of political authority and delves into the paradoxical relationship between Gandhi as Mother India and her declaration of emergency conditions. The discussion of allegories of power, women under emergency conditions, and rural village infrastructures and communities versus the pluralism of modern democracy invites comparisons with African structures and conditions. Rajan's study broadly emphasizes areas of intervention in complex feminist and post-colonial debates, providing detailed readings of texts and clear summaries of problematic areas while outlining a cultural construction of female subjectivity that allows for contestation and agency. The overall direction of her thesis suggests a view of women as conflicted subjects and sites of conflict, 135. However, the general direction of the photographs and historical occurrences cited seems to portray Indian wives as passive objects of their husbands and society's volition, creating a contradiction. This might exemplify one of the problems she introduces in her discussion. Is subversion located within reading or writing practices? Iconography tends to lead us towards static contemplation and aesthetic responses. Politics, the non-essential essence of feminism, appears to require more than contemplation.